Sound in the Silence is a multidisciplinary education project that uses art and history workshops on location at events on places where things happened that use the art and the history to explore and express the lasting effects of war, genocide, Holocaust, and forced migration. Most of Nalewki Street, the biggest part of Nalewki Street, uh, was inside the ghetto. The first gate to the ghetto was more or less next to the gate to the garden, and later it was moved like 200 meters further. So that's why I said this, this part is called Ghetto Heroes, but it wasn't even a ghetto. Obviously this is the view to that direction, like you have the, the gate, the very same gate to the garden on the right side. For weeks, really, before I came to Warsaw, I spent time trying to study, looking at the maps of the, of kind of the contemporary map of Warsaw and the historical map where the ghetto was and trying to make some sort of connection points. Where were these places? Where were these ghetto spots? Where, where, where was the wall? Where, where was the buildings that burned? So yeah, that's, that's, really, that's really the deal. On the beginning in, in ghetto lived approximately 400,000 people and this number increased to even 450,000 in 1941 when Germans liquidated the smaller ghettos around Warsaw and forced the inhabitants of those ghettos to, to move to Warsaw ghetto. On 22nd of July 1942, Germans started the great liquidation of Warsaw ghetto and in, within two months until 21st of September 1942, nearly 300,000 of Warsaw ghetto inhabitants were sent to Treblinka extermination camp where almost all of them all of them died. So, more or less, that's how looked the, the former ghetto site. Almost every single building was completely destroyed in purpose during uprising or after the uprising in ghetto. And it was just like one big pile of, of ruins. I'm Kasia, I'm from Polish Radio. And um, I just want to make uh, some short documentary about this project. And what uh, is to here? I mean, it's just mm -hmm. a um, Also, I think it's a bit weird that here the street is. That can't be so. That lässt not so the right emotion in einem richtig gehen. But it's just man fühlt sich ein bisschen eingekesselt von den Mauern, die um einen so herum sind und. Ähm, Ja, und ähm, mit der Verbindung zu der Natur, weiß ich nicht, ich finde es ein bisschen emotional. Well, for me, it's very emotional to stand here. It's a memorial. Uh, it has so many, this wall, it has so many names of the people that had to experience war and, and all the sorrow and horror. So for me, it's a very emotional place. I find it, find it, hard to be here. Warsaw had two uh, incredible uprisings within the time period of the Nazi occupation. The first one was 1943 with the Jewish uprising in the ghetto. The Warsaw uprising happened a year later in 1944 and it was a real attempt I believe of the Warsovians to really try to fight the Nazis and to really make a dent and it wasn't supposed to last very long but it ended up lasting 63 days and the, the deeper it got into this fight and the more kind of guerrilla warfare the Polish resistance had against the Nazis, um, the closer on the, I believe on the east side, the Russians got to the river. And apparently as they got to the river, Stalin said, nope, don't, don't go, let the Nazis crush the Polish and kind of do the job for us. This moment, the tides could have been turned, except they had no support and had very little, very little ammunition. If you think like one rocket launcher against a fleet of tanks, you can't win that. You can't win that battle. Maybe subconsciously, you know, the the project as connected to young people is this is a chance to do the thing that I never did for myself. I never got to ask. I never took the power. I never cared. I care now as an adult. The Jewish Historical Institute was yeah. called that. Yeah. Uh, there were like these letters uh, written by the people who actually lived that that time, yeah. and they were like, "Oh, I'm gonna write this letter because I don't want my legacy to just disappear when I die." 
and it's really they held haunting. held it in their hands yeah. and they wrote out this message, mm. this last call for, yeah. please remember me. Um, those letters, reading those, that made a really big in impact on yeah. me personally and I feel that those in a way really helped me get these emotions in a way and like yeah. bring them to the workshops, I think. Yeah, it was really touching to read and I was like, oh, I'm gonna cry now because yeah. it was really hard, but yeah. Mm. This is gonna be a little bit longer of a writing exercise, so uh, give yourself some space for it. What I want you to do is to write a letter 65 years into the future, transmitting what it is that is urgent about your life, about this moment in time, for the people in the future. How do we make something that is individually subjective universally objective. It's a very challenging task. Um, I would love it if someone would read me their letter. She in the corner is like, no, nah, I'm not doing it. Um, that's okay, but it would be great if someone did it. But yes. I haven't finished. Yeah. <laughs> it's just going on and on and on and on. And on. Well, again, that's the urgency piece, right? If like, some of those transmissions we read. There's something really happening. There's an edge there. There's a conflict. And as, as a dramatic writer, we know that that's what makes performance interesting, is conflict. No. 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 This is a, a graphic score and it's an emotional representation of a letter that was written to the future. And so we'll be performing this as a choir. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to suggest something. You guys here, you're going to be singing this spiral going this way and coming out this side. You guys sing the spiral from this side going out that way. Erti, you sing this bit. Okay? Yeah. Okay? Cool. Do you want to uh, assign these pitches to different people? Is yeah? Sure. Show? Okay, who, who does what? Uh, Igor, take the highest. Oh my god. <laughs> it doesn't have to be super, I just go okay, high. Okay, okay. You're in high middle. Sure, let's do that. Yeah. Uh, middle low. All oh, right. Low. Come together, all of you. Yes, and don't forget to look like this. Over the shoulder, hips. Ellie. Aha. Now you can use Olivia the space, yes. Great. Just walking. And then when you meet someone, make your think. Be decided with your focus. It's walking and crowded, but I think we can get there. Great. Just seeing it outside makes me feel like this part should happen in, in that outside part. Yeah. You know, like here. This is my little diagram. <laughs> yeah, completely, no? Yeah. When you go to the ghetto, you feel sad, but also happy because you are safe. You live in Hamburg or whatever, you have a family, you can do whatever you want to do, and you feel happy because you don't have to live at the ghetto or feel the emotions that people was feeling or 
start getting proud yeah. and thankful for what you have yeah, thankful. And, and what you can do now and who you are. I'm happy that the world is changing. Yes, and that we can live this life yeah, now. That, that we can do whatever we want to do or we don't live in fear. Yes. Open, open, open. Yes. Be open. Be, be open for me. Yeah. Please. Go, 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 go. Feel, feel it everywhere. Yeah. His back, yeah, 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 shoulders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Use, 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 use body. Use the tool. Use the hands. Yes. Breathing, breathing, breathing. Yeah. I can. And now, how is it? That's good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hack each other, hack each other, hack each other for the end. Yeah, yeah. Woo! 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 They are very, very hungry mm. of this. That, that, that this kind of give me more, give me more uh, tasks is really amazing. One girl said, "I can't sing, I can't sing," and then suddenly her voice is just amazing, Am really mm. amazing. And it's so delicate, and mm. it's great. It, it's really there's some little gems coming out of it. Mm -hmm. If they will be open, the students, if we can work with them because, and we can use them for the movement materials. Absolutely. absolutely. And we can absolutely. give you the... They are yes. amazing, amazing. Yeah. They look great. Yeah, so I think that kind of stuff is great. As opposed to, okay, now we're done with the performance, now let's do other yeah. things. Hopefully everything, both these uh, objective concepts and these subjective concepts come together and really blend and, and have no more borders, have no more places where this is art and this is history and it's all just young people expressing how they feel about their lives and, and what's wrong in the world. I think there's a few ways to approach it, right? There's a few ways to approach it. There's a way to think about it, think about it until it's perfect and then present it or just to put it out and see it in its messy shape and clean it up afterwards. Me as an artist, I like to make a big mess. Not every second moment has to be about the history. It's here. It's in the space. It's in our bones. It's in our bodies. It's about what happened in the past. It's about how are we dealing with it in the present with the hopes of creating a future. I've said in the past, too, that the project initially was about looking back. But really now, I think it's about making sure there is a forward. Oh, that's why. That's why you chose it. <laughs> You call. I think as every day passes, we get further and further away from certain histories. And so it's really important that, especially here in Europe, that young people know what happened here. Because life hasn't always been this easy and hasn't always been this plentiful with stuff and food and clothes and candies and shopping that, that, that wars happened here, that people have done horrible things to each other in this place and now it's been covered over, so it's really about reminding folks that what their history is and, and where they come from and the things they've had to fight for and fight against and survive. Let's go, let's go. Come on, let's go. Eddie, Julia. We are doing with it with people who became very close to us by only these 10 days. And we can never see again, and I think 
it's something special to just make an art with this special people. Don't cry. <laughs> <laughs> no, I won't cry.